Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And we'll be reading verse 29. 7, 29. Lo, this only have I found, that God had made man upright, but they have sought out many, many inventions or devices. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we have come together to worship you and to partake of the blessings of this day. We well, thank you for joining mercies, Lord, for your fatherly protection and for making today a possibility. We well, thank you, Lord, for your children who have arrived here safely. And we hold the faith for those on their way, praying that you will bring them here safe and in peace. We thank you, Lord, for your son, your daughter, who have come here individually, but we live here together as husband and wife. Thank you for the families they represent, and thank you for the Church of Jesus Christ. We ask your presence among us today to be that of a father to bless us, not to judge and condemn us. But may we find grace and mercy in thy sight to take the blessings of today, the corrections of today, the rebukes of today. And when life on earth is over and our work here is done, we come before you, Lord. May we hear that voice say to us, Well done, faithful servants. Enter into the rest prepared for you. This is our prayer, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask it. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. I just read from the book of wisdom. Wisdom is the attribute of God. Wisdom is the attribute of God. And wisdom can only come from God. And today, I want to speak on what I have titled, The Upright Man or Woman. The passage we just read said in the beginning, that God made a man. How? Can I hear you? When the Bible says man there, it means man and woman. In the beginning, God made a man and a woman in one unit. In one unit. And made the man to sleep. And then brought out the woman from the man. And in matrimonies like this, God brings the man back and put him back in the woman. Or put the woman back in the man. And two becomes one again. Praise the name of the Lord. So in the beginning, I want you to listen. Church, please listen. Please listen. God made man. In what condition? Good. And man has done what? Discovered many other inventions or devices. I want you to please pay on an undivided attention. If you would like to turn with me to the book of Genesis. God explains this better in the book of all beginnings. Genesis means beginning. Genesis, the very first chapter. We see the way that God made all that he made. And how he made them and described them to be upright. In other words, perfect. In other words, without deficiency. Amen. In the book of Genesis, if you are there, I want to read a few verses in chapters 1. First, verse 4. Verse 4. And God saw the light that it was. It was what? I know why I'm asking you that. 
it will catch up with you. So I want you to read with me. And God saw the light that it was what? Amen. And God divided the light from the darkness. Light and darkness can never be together. Now you know the reason why. What God has divided, nobody can join them back. You can't put darkness and light together. If that is true, say amen. And what God has put together, no man should put asunder. All that try to do it will face God at the judgment day. God saw that the light was good. See? Now, when we talk about the good light, we're not talking about Nepal. Huh? Nepal is one of the things that men have made. It looks like light. But if you touch it, you'll find that it is not good. When we say good, it means that thing has life in it and it is harmless. It's never harmless. Touch it, you'll find out. If you touch it, you'll find out whether it is harmless. The Bible said Jesus went about doing good. Even his enemies testified it. He went about healing, raising the dead. Casting out devils. See? When we say good from God's point of view, we are saying this thing has life in it. And it is also harmless. You see? They flogged Jesus. Did he flog back? They slapped him. Did he slap back? No. They did all kinds of things. He was harmless. He was like a lamb. He was like a dog. That's why the people called him good master. God made man like that. I'm coming to that. Look at verse uh, 10 of Genesis chapters 1. And God called the day, the dry land, earth. And the gathering together of the waters called he what? Seas. And God saw that. It was good again. See? It was good. Perfect. All right, look at verse 12. Verse 12. And the earth brought forth what? Grass of vegetations. And herb yielding seed after its kind. And the tree yielding fruit. Whose seed was in itself. After its kind. And God saw that it was good again. Now, in everything that God made, God saw that it was good. All right. We'll go a little further. Remember what good is from God's point of view. Something that has received life. And also it is what? Harmless. All right. We get down to verse 26. 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. The first time God blessed what he created was when he made man in his image. God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth and God said behold I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for food 
and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is what? Life. I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was not only good now, but very good, very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. It was when God made man in his own image, he blessed them the first time. God did not just say, I admire what I've done because it is good and it is harmless. He added his blessing to it. He added authority to it. He said, you subdued all the animals, the fishes of the sea, the birds of the air, the trees are under you because you look like me. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. And then God looked and it was very good. Now, good means it has life in it. And it cannot kill you if you eat it. It has life. It gives you life. It will not poison you. Very good means more than that. Very good means it has endless life. Man was not made to die. That was why God blessed man. And God said man was very good. You know the Bible speaks about being born again. It said a verily, verily. I said to you, emphasizing the importance. For the first time we read verily. Was when God spoke about his children. Now. If everything God made, God said, Behold, it is good. And when he made a man and a woman, he said it was very good. Can you imagine yourself to be very good? Are you very good? If not, then there is something wrong. Because God said, The man he made, and the woman he made, when he looked at them, they were very good. Look at us today. Are we very good? If not, something is wrong somewhere. And something has to happen to bring us back to the place where God can look at us again. And say, one more time, my children are very good. If that does not happen in your life, You've lost that blessing. You've lost that authority. You've lost that endless life. That very good is withdrawn. And that's what we want to talk about. Because it had to do with man and woman. It has to do with husband and wife. It had to do with son and daughter of God. We read in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7. It said, God made man upright. But man has invented many, many, or discovered many, many inventions. Right from the Garden of Eden, that was when man and woman began to discover for themselves things that are not good for them. Things that God cannot say, that's good. Things that God said, don't touch, don't do that. Because all I made for you is good. The food God gave us to eat was good for us. The seed that is in the, is in the fruit. The fish of the field. The animals. God says there is life inside them. You eat them, you have more life inside them. But don't touch this one in the middle of the garden. Why? It, is a, it has knowledge of good and evil. I don't want you to know anything about evil. I want you to know about good because you are very good. God is good, isn't he? His children should be good also. Amen. God's children should not know about good and know about evil. If you know about good, you can do good. If you know about evil, then you can do evil. God says, don't know good and evil because you can't serve two masters. Praise the name of the Lord. So man from the Garden of Eden where God put the first husband and wife and gave them these rules. 
I have given you herbs of the field, fishes of the sea, animals of the forest, birds of the air. You are their masters. Eat them because there's life in them. But this one, don't touch it. Ecclesiastic chapter 7 verse 29 said, God made man upright. God made man very good. God made woman very good. But it was us that went to discover for ourselves what is killing us. But I want you to know, in that same garden, I'm going to speak more about this tomorrow morning, God willing. God willing. My topic tomorrow will be the right to the tree of life. Because God looked at Adam and said, this man has done what you say he shouldn't do. We don't want him to go back and take the tree of life. He will eat it and he will live forever again. So, drive him away. And the angels drove him away. So he couldn't eat the tree of life. What I'm trying to say now is, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life, we are together in the same garden. Man dis- decided to eat the wrong one. And what he ate was not good. There was no life in it. It was harmful. The devil told him, you will not die. And he did. He died. Every year there's a new sickness in the world. The doctors don't know what to do with it. Why? We left the good things that God gave us. We discovered for ourselves. Mark that scripture. Before you discover for yourself another one that would put you in more trouble with God. Everybody is discovering today. Look at the type of dances they dance today. Look like demons that came out from hell. Everybody wants to be like an American. They're discovering and discovering, discovery going on. Every discovery today takes people more further and further away from God. Away from God. Away from God. Children have no regard for parents anymore. No respect for guardian, no respect for authority, no respect for nothing. Why? They call it civilization. What is it? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29. Man keeps discovering for himself what destroys him every day. But I want you to know, as the world is discovering the things that will destroy them, every country wants to have, what is it now? A nuclear bomb. Everybody wants to go to the moon. Everybody wants to go to, I don't know what they're looking for in the moon and in the sun. God gave this earth to human beings to stay. I don't know what they're going up to the moon to look for. Why? Ecclesiastes 7.29 says, Man is discovering to his own destruction more and more devices. But while that is going on, God's children are discovering the narrow way that leads to eternal life. They are going to the kingdom of God. Walking back to God. Claiming their right to the tree of life. They are going back to the tree of life. Going back to the tree of life. Discovering again the way back to the tree of life. That God can look at us again and say, very good. The Bible says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. If God called his children very good at the beginning, something happened that we became very bad. Something's going to happen again and we become very good again in the sight of God. These two here have chosen the narrow way. The world today, young men and young women are discovering the shorter way of getting married. Just get her pregnant first. Then the parents out of annoyance will leave her for you. Ecclesiastes 7, 29. They are married from the back door. Just pack your things and come to my house. Ecclesiastes 7.29 What is your your father saying? After all, you are of age. Are you not over 18? Uh -uh. If you are above 18, don't worry about what your father said. Just pack your things and come. Ecclesiastes 7.29 They are discovering new ways. But let me tell you, whatever God did, anybody who sees it will call it good. Because God is good. And whatever God does will be good. God will call it good. The father will call it good. Their mother will call it good. 
The church will call it good. The friends will call it good. But the ones that the young men are discovering, it will always end in shame and disgrace. Everything that God made, God said it is good. When he made you, God said you were very good. The question now is, are you very good? If you are not very good, then there is something that has happened to you. Something else has to happen again to bring you back to the place where God can refer to you again as a beloved child. As God can look at you and say, very good. That's why Jesus came into the world. That he may destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil began in heaven. When he said to himself, I will be like God. I will ascend to the mount of the congregation. Satan wants to be worshipped like God. And he came into the garden of Eden. And deceived the son and daughter of God. And turned them to doubting God. And to believing the devil. And when they discovered the devil was a liar, it was too late. And from then, the works of Satan began. The works of Satan include deception. He brought sin into the world. And from sin, death came. From sin, sicknesses came. Curable and incurable sicknesses came. All these things that break our heart. Every graveyard you see today, every hospital you see today, is the works of Satan. Every witchcraft, every covenant, every secret society, every wickedness, every corruption, every evil, are the works of Satan. The Bible says Jesus came into the world that he may bring to an end the works of Satan. You see, little children, their parents have so far to bring up through nursery school, primary school, get to secondary school, become useless. Drink, smoke, come back, beat up their parents, steal everything in the house, put the family to shame, destroy the name of the family. Uh, uh, it was better that they, they were never born. What is it? The works of Satan. Jesus came into the world that the works of Satan may stop in your life. There is no remedy to it. Nobody can stop the works of Satan except the God that made you in the beginning and say you are very good. That same God can stop the works of Satan in your life. And then he can look back at you and call you very good again. Until you let Jesus come into your heart. Let Jesus come into your home. Not just be a church goer on Sundays and Fridays and Wednesdays and they call you chairman of this and chairman of that and mother of church. There are no titles in heaven. There's no need asking St. Gabriel to pray for you. St. Cecilia pray for you. St. Monica pray for you. Nobody's praying for you. The dead don't pray for the living. You are here now. Confess your sins to God. Ask God to forgive you. That's why Jesus came. That your sins may be forgiven when you confess them. God said he made you very good. Are you very good now? If you are not, then something has gone wrong between you and the God who made you. Look for how to correct it before you die, before you leave this world. Because there is no repentance in the grave. Let me read this before I, I go on. In verse... Uh, in uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 28, if you would like to read that with me quickly. Proverbs chapter 28. I want to read verses 14. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 14. See what God says here. Happy is a man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall do what? Fall into mischief. Huh. Happy is the man that feareth. Feareth who? It says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But that's not the end of it. 
will of God is the end of it. The fear of the Lord begins, gives you the beginning of wisdom. That's where your wisdom begins. When you decide in your heart to begin to fear God, then the wisdom of God has been quickened in your life. It has started in your life. If your house is in darkness and there's no light, then you go to the wall and turn on the light. That's not, you didn't just turn on the light because you want to turn on the light. You were looking for something. When you turn on the light, then you go and look for what you're looking for. When the fear of God is quickened in your life, then that fear of God moves you to do many things and moves you to stop doing many things. There are husbands who have no fear of God. So they beat their wives as if they're beating a slave. I want every man here to listen to me. Your wife is the flesh of your flesh and the bone of your bone. She is not a slave. She is not a servant. She is a mistress of the house and by the word of God deserves more honor than you can ever imagine. And if you treat your wife without honor, you will stand judgment of God. For God said you should treat her with honor because she is a weaker vessel. Did you hear that? Good. And that goes for him because he has not married before and to everybody else that has married before. Read with me also the book of Proverbs chapter 31. 31. And verses 30. Proverbs 31 verse 30. Favor is deceitful. And beauty is what? Vain. But a woman which feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, I want every woman to listen to me. God has a word for the man. God has a word for the woman. God has more word for women than men. The world tells you that that gender equality. God did not say so. The man is the head of the woman. That is the word of God. If you believe it, sister, you will have peace. The fear of God will make you believe it. And when you believe it, you walk towards it. You honor your husband as the head of the house. You respect your husband like you respect God. And your husband will love you as Christ loved the church. And the home will be a little paradise on earth. But if you don't have the fear of God, any woman that does not have the fear of God, is in danger. The Bible says that a favor is deceitful and your beauty is nothing. We are just beautiful sun. We came from the dust, we go back to the dust. It is the spirit of God inside you that matters. If you don't have the spirit of God inside you, beauty is vain. Beauty is vain. So, the woman that feareth God when life on earth is over and you go and stand before God, God will praise you. Because it is the fear of God that will make you respect your husband. You talk to your husband with respect, with reverence, with honor. You may be more educated than him. You may be more successful in business. You may be more high in, in position in the office. But when you come home, he is the Olushe Gu Obasanjo of the house. Amen. Somebody say Amen! Now I want you to say Amen. You say Amen. That's better. Somebody said Amen here. I don't know if any of my daughters can say Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now I agree that you are not against me. If you are against me, you are against the word of God. And I am not here to please you. Because I want to save you from hell. In this church, there is no divorce. No. No divorce at all. In your churches, you may have had divorce, married three or four or five husbands. There is none here. There is no need for two husbands. There is no need for three wives. Amen? 
Here we teach you that marriage is based on love. Not money. Not education. If your wife offends you, forgive her. Don't go and marry another one. The other one can kill you. If your husband offends you, forgive him. As God for Christ's sake forgive you. Amen. Where there is love, there is forgiveness. Love is not cooking a wonderful soup. Wonderful soup can mean, my husband, I am sorry. Okay? But that is not love. Anybody can cook a wonderful soup. They cook it in the hotel. Alright? Anybody can cook a wonderful soup. But not everybody can say, I am sorry. Kneel down and say, forgive me. Not everybody can do that. Only a God-fearing woman can do that. Amen. And then a God-fearing man cannot go out there and give a strange woman 5,000 naira. And she will make you what you will be. Love begets love. If you sow love, you reap love. You sow hate, you reap hate. Glory be to God. The man that feared God, the Bible says, happy is he. The woman that feared God, the Bible says, she shall be praised. You see what builds a home? A man that feared God and a woman that feared God. Then God can look at them and say, very good. If you're a man that fears God, clap for yourself. Ah, wonderful. That's good. That's good. That's good. Even small, small boys were clapping. Now, I'm talking about married people. If you're not married, just keep your hands one side. Married women that believe that they fear God, or from today, they want to start fearing God. Clap for yourself. <laughs> Wonderful. Lord, you can see, decisions are being made. Even my daughter was clapping. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm glad to see that. Glory be to our God. Alright, quickly turn with me again to the book of Proverbs, chapter 15. Chapter 15 and verse 8. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. Delight. Why? God made man upright. And the man can be upright today. The woman can be upright today. How? By being God fearing. Return to God. Treat your wife like a daughter of God. Treat your husband like a son of God. Be happy that you are a God-fearing man. Be happy that you are a woman that feared God. When you kneel down to pray, your prayer will be a delight unto God. A delight. But if you are not a God-fearing man, even an offering that you bring, a sacrifice to the house of God, is an abomination. Think about it. And decide whether you want to become upright from today. That's what God wants, you, God wants you to be. When you speak, you speak the truth. An upright man speaks the truth. Because God is the way, the truth, and the life. If Christ is in your life, you always speak the truth. Tell your wife the truth. Tell your husband the truth. No matter how bitter, tell him the truth. If he loves you, he will forgive. If you read... The book of Corinthians chapter 13, I believe. It tells you what love does. Love forgives. Love endures all things. Love believes all things. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. That's what love does. Anybody that does not have God in him cannot do that. If you have God in you, you do that. That's why Christian families are different from other families. Why? God is the head of the home. They may have their disagreements, they may have their ups and downs, but one thing is certain, they will never go to court to divorce. Why? The Bible has a solution to their problem. Satan can come to their house and cause confusion. But the moment they realize, hey, this is Satan, you know what they do? They cast him out. Because we have power to cast him out. But those who are not Christians, they let the devil cast them to the court. Tear them apart. Turn the children to confusion. They become motherless children and fatherless children. End up at the bus stop. 
smoke in their home, all over the place. Why? They let the devil destroy their foundation. But if you are a child of God, you can never let the devil take you too far. Before you realize, wait a minute, what is happening? This is not to the glory of God. Hey, I am sorry. I'm sorry. And then she turns back and says, I am sorry also. And both of them go down on their knees and commit it to God and it's all over. The prayer of the upright is what? A delight. The moment you begin to pray, God will listen. Because he knows the voices of his children. Or the sacrifice of the wicked. It's an abomination. One more scripture. Proverbs 28. And we shall pray now. Proverbs 28. I want to read verse 9 and 10. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. If God speaks to you through a man like yourself, or through the Holy Scriptures. And you turn your ears away from the word of God. You see what the Bible says will happen? You see what the Bible says will happen? So, if in the beginning God made us and looked at us and said, we are good. It's like little children, babies that are born. You look at a little baby, so sweet. So sweet. Little babies. They are so cute. They are so sweet. I love babies so much. So much. No wonder why Jesus said, except we are like little children, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. See? Children don't have bitterness. They can cry now. And the moment they finish crying, they get up, they start playing. They don't plan to do something tomorrow. Or wait for you on the road. Or set a trap for you. Or they don't have that idea. The children don't have no evil. They don't know it. But... Those of us that God looked at and said, very good. Look at us now. There are some of you sitting here that don't talk to somebody. For six months ago, you have not talked to somebody. Some did not talk to their husband before coming here. And they're expecting after this service, they go home and start the quarrel where they suspended it. They put it on pause. It just pause. When they go back, they put it on play. Then they start quarreling again. Let me tell you, that quarrel has ended. It has ended. Amen. Whether the husband was right and the wife was wrong, or the husband was wrong and the wife was right, nobody's wrong anymore. Nobody's right anymore. It is the devil that came to your house, and the devil has left. Jesus will come into your home, and there will be peace from now on. Unless we are like little children, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Bible says the upright will have good things to come. We should all be thanking God for seeing the beginning of this year. And here we are, approaching the end of it. There are many people we know that started the year with us. They are no more here. Some have lost their two legs. Some have lost their two eyes. Some are uncurable where they are now. But here you are, healthy and strong, looking brilliant and beautiful. Don't you have reason to thank God? Why the quarrel? Why let the devil be a referee in your home? Why not let Jesus be the head of that house? Huh? So that the upright, he says, he will have good things in possession, not bad things. You will not have sicknesses in possession. You will not have accidents in possession. You will not have sudden deaths in possession. Your enemies will not overcome you in possession. You will not have anything evil in possession. You will have good things in possession. Those things are prayed to God to give you. You will have them in possession. You will attend the marriages of your children like this. You will see your children's children in possession. You will have good things in possession. That's the promise of God. You will have good things in possession. Not only this year, the years to come. 
as long as you have decided to become upright. So that God will look at you and you become his delight. You will always have good things in possession. Even if sickness come your way, God is your healer. God will not allow you to be put to shame. And those that hate you will never rule over you. You will not have bad things in possession. The same thing I said to all of you. And to everyone that received it, stand up and say amen. May yeah. God bless you. Please keep standing while we pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Redeemer, and Healer, and Protector, we well, thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray, dear God, I have stopped it there because of time. But you are the infinite one. I pray, Lord, that you will make it more and more understandable. Amen. That we may begin to think, are we what God really created? Because man has manufactured so many things. Everything has become artificialized. And no more the natural thing that God gave. But help us, Lord, to return to you. Amen. To become your delight again. To become upright in your eyes again. So that we can have good things in possession. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We approach your son and your daughter. Who have come before you and before us all. To be joined as husband and wife. We ask dear God. As we commit them into your hands. That your blessings will follow them. Bless everything we do today. As we give you glory and honor and praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we ask it. Amen. Amen. Please, in closing. Please remain standing for a few minutes. I wish to announce that the parents of the two, the bride and the groom, are here to honor this occasion. It is always normal to ask who gave this person to this person to get married in churches where Maybe the officiating minister is not aware of what has gone before the wedding day. I wish to announce that nothing has gone uh, before the, today that I'm not aware of. These are my children, and I know that they are, the customary thing has been honorably done, and everything has uh, been honorably done. Uh, done to the glory of God and to the satisfaction of the church and I therefore without any uh, fear of contradiction proceed with this wedding ceremony I welcome you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and these two men standing before us today have come before God and all of us to get into the holy matrimony, an institution ordained by God that none should go into unadvisedly or without godly counsel. These two have come to go into this holy institution or matrimony, having been counseled, counseled and advised and being Bible students, they also know, as Paul had said, that anyone that goes into this Otherwise, than the word of God does allow, the marriage is not lawful. Therefore, I will ask the congregation, if there's anyone here that has any reason why these two should not be joined together lawfully in this holy matrimony, you can now speak up or forever hold your peace. Going? Gone. All right? I will speak to both of you, as you well know. It is commanded in the Holy Scriptures that anyone who goes into this matrimony otherwise than the word of God does allow, which you are well aware of, that marriage before God is not acceptable. Do you have any reason why we should stop? No. No? You? No. All right. So I proceed. Is it on? Alright, you are going to 
say what I am going to say if you agree with me. And if you don't agree with me, just say, no, I don't agree. And we we'll, we'll still go downstairs and see if there's something for reception. Amen? Amen. Now, repeat after me. Use that so that everybody can hear you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we have some voice on this mic? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before this congregation. Before this congregation. And before God. And before God. I take you, say her name. I take you, Sister Grace Adivaya. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And before God. And before God. And this congregation. And this congregation. I give you this ring. 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 As a token. As a token. Of my vow. Of my vow. Of my vow. That I will love you. That I will love you. And I will cherish you. That I will cherish you. As the word of God commands. As the word of God commands. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before God. Before God. And this congregation. And this congregation. I take you. I take you, Nathaniel Medugu. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And before God. And before God. And this church. Church. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token. As a token. Of my vow. Of my vow. That I will. Love you, and I will love you, and obey you, as the word of God commands. As the word of God commands. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right. No, no, left hand, left hand. This man has not married before. I said. I said All right. Now we're going to pray. Give me the hand to the rings. The hand to the rings. Okay. Now let's bow our heads, please. Gracious God Almighty, these precious children have exchanged their vows before you. We pray today that your blessings will follow them. As we all gather here as witnesses, the parents are here, the congregation, we have all come to honor this occasion. And you, who is the author and the finisher of this marriage, we ask that you will bless them in Jesus' name. Lord, these precious children are starting a life and a journey today that they have not made before. As a travel life journey as husband and wife, we pray that your presence will go with them. Bless the work of their hands. Bless the fruit of their womb. May the Holy Spirit of God watch over them. May those that live around them see the beauty of Christ in them. We pray, dear God, that your mercy and grace will dwell with them. That they too will be a channel through which you bless others. That other young men and women will see what God can do for those that wait upon him. Bless these precious children as we dedicate this marriage to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, President. President. Glory be to our God. We will go to the table to sign the marriage register and I'll invite uh, Brother Stephen Adebayo and Mr. Simon Madugu. Am I correct? Madugu. Okay. Please. Come with us to the uh, table to sign the marriage register. We will sing a song from our songbook and we will give our offerings as we go through to sign the register. Number 318, again, number 318. Number 318. The righteous will have good things in possession. Remember the upright. God made you upright. And he said you were very good. 
Don't leave this earth very bad. Because God will reject you when you get there. He made you very good. He cannot accept you back very bad. Any of you think of it. If you give your shoe to somebody and he spoil it, will you take it back? Good. God has made a way for you to come back to him very good. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. We well, thank you all for coming to be with us in this marriage service. Tomorrow we have another one in the afternoon. We invite you all to be with us at 3 o'clock. Tomorrow morning I want to advise you all to please go to church and worship God. Don't stay at home and sleep till 12 noon. You will be insulting the God of goodness who gave you good health and strength and watched over you all year round. If you don't have a church you have confidence in, come and worship with us tomorrow morning. Come here tomorrow at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. We pray from 8.30 till 9 o'clock. And then we'll start the service. If you want to pray, then we have God that answers prayer. So come a little bit earlier and pray your heart out. Pour your, pour your needs to God. God still answers prayer. Amen. So we are expecting you tomorrow morning, God willing, and then at 3 o'clock we have another wedding. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you please stand up, both of you, and praise the congregation. By the authority of the Word of God, the Holy Bible, by the law of this country, as God's servant, I pronounce them husband and wife. Amen. One more thing, what God has joined together, let no man or woman put asunder. Let's give the Lord a clap for us and everybody. You know the people. God bless you. It's been a nice day, isn't it? Thanks be to God. By 10 o'clock this morning, I was in Imo State. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? And yet I got to church before some people. Everybody kept calling, are you back? Have you come back? Now I'm back. Give me what you kept for me. Especially these people sitting here. I'm waiting to see what they kept for me. I am back. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Let's stand together and close in prayer. Through the love of God our Savior, all will be well. Our Lord and our God will thank you for our precious children who have stood before us today to give you glory and honor and praise. And we pray also, Lord, that you will honor them in return by blessing them Bless their future, bless their present, bless everything about them. Bless everyone rejoicing with them. Bless everyone rejoicing with them. Bless everyone rejoicing with them. Make them a channel of blessing also. And may the families they represent come to honor them very highly. We return thanks to you, Lord, for making it a possibility. We go downstairs to continue this festivity. And we ask that your presence and your blessing go with us. Thank you, Father. We know you have blessed us more than we can even explain. And taught us something we have forgotten. That in the beginning, we were very good in your sight. And we pray, O oh God, that at the end, may we also be very good. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church says, Amen. 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 You say Amen. Hallelujah. Alright, my daughter, sit down, give, give me a song. You remember me?